Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are so excited for you to be here today um, and learn more about the Chapman admission process and get your questions answered. My name is Jamie Garcia. I'm a senior admission counselor here at Chapman. I am an alum of Chapman, graduated in 2019, um, and I'm just really excited to be here today to chat with you all and help you learn more. I work with students from San Mateo County, Northern San Diego County, as well as the entire state of Texas. So if that is you, I'm your admission counselor. Wonderful. And I'm going to have my colleague introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Tanaz Norian. I'm an assistant director of admission here at Chapman. I'm also an alum of the institution. A fun fact is Jamie and I actually started our time in the Office of Admission together. So it's really exciting that we're here with you all today. I work with students from the San Fernando Valley and the Mid-Atlantic. So if you're joining us from any of these areas, hello, I am your admission counselor. In our application, we actually have a fast facts section. Yeah. So if you haven't taken a look at that, I'm sure you will once we get to the common application portion. But I'm gonna ask Jamie today what song she would listen to, what song should the admission committee listen to if we were reading your application? So, okay. Realistically, anything by Ben Platt. But specifically, I'm gonna say um, Grow As We Go by Ben Platt. If you have not listened to it, please do. Um, and then to come back with another fast fact, one of our fast fact questions this year is, what is the best piece of advice you have, you have ever received? That's a good one. I would say the best piece of advice I've ever received is from a former colleague of ours, Garrett Addison. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. He used <laughs> to do these Facebook Lives. So if he's watching this, hello, Garrett. We miss you a lot. Yes. But he told me once, everything's going to be OK. Just take a deep breath and stand still sometimes. So that is probably the best piece of advice yeah. I've ever received. It's yeah. a good thing to remember, especially in the application process. Totally. Right? It can feel hectic. It can feel overwhelming. And just taking a second to like, totally gonna be okay is really important exactly yeah I like that um, so today we are going to be answering some of your common questions about the application process or some of the common questions that we tend to receive throughout the application process once we get done with some of those common questions we are going to do kind of a live Q&A so if you have questions throughout this live feel free to put them in the comments our colleague Steele is going to be um, grabbing those questions and sending them to us and I'm gonna have them on my iPad here so that we can get those questions answered for you um, but let's get into let's it get started we're gonna start at the the very start of the application process am I applying as a first year or am I applying as a transfer Great question it is a very important question everyone needs to know what they're doing and how we determine if you are a first year or a transfer student is based on have you taken college courses um, after your high school graduation date. If you have, you're a transfer student. If you have not, you're a first year student. It is as simple as that. Um, if you are identifying as a transfer student, you have taken college classes after your high school graduation date, um, I highly recommend reaching out to our transfer team. They are absolutely amazing and so helpful moving through the process. And their email is transfers, plural, at chapman.edu. Um, so I would definitely reach out to them. That is a great, great resource for students. Um, but what's next in the application process? How do I apply? What does that look like? Good question. Help us out. <laughs> Good question. I will say big shout out to our transfer team. Yeah. Fun fact. Another fun facts. We do a lot of those yeah. here. So hopefully you have some fun facts you'd like to share with us if we meet you on the road. But a fun fact is I was a transfer student. So I transferred after my first year at a public institution. So big shout out to our transfer team. They're super helpful with any questions that you have. Oh, yeah. So as far as first year related, the common application is open even for our transfer students. So first year and transfers, you can get started on that cam common application as soon as today. Jamie, I'm going to have you fill in the blank. Common app is, ooh, this is real tough. It's open. Oh, yep. <laughs> Nice. Teamwork. <laughs> so if you haven't familiarized yourself with the Common App platform, go to commonapp.org, start a login, get familiarized with the platform. Good news is you're probably applying to another school that uses the Common Application as well. So they partner with over 900 universities. So start that Common App login because it is 
open. There we go. <laughs> so if you're wondering the fine details of the application process, we actually have an amazing web page. So just go to chapman.edu, type in the search engine how to apply, and all the nitty gritty will be there from being an international student, an undocumented student, um, applying as a homeschool student. So all that information is there. You also might be applying to a program that requires what's called a creative supplement. It's essentially a portfolio. This will differ from major to major, so go ahead, check out that webpage. All of those requirements are there. As far as other things that we'd like to mention throughout the application process is that we are test optional. This isn't a trick, everybody. Promise. About We promise. About 72% of our applicant pool in 2022 applied test optional, so you will not, it will not be counted against you if you do not submit a test score. But if you are falling in our averages and you do have an SAT or ACT, you can send it in. As far as other things to mention is our deadlines. Can't it believe we're out. already almost at October. November 1st is literally right around the corner. So that is our early action, early decision deadline for our first year students. So if you're unfamiliar with those terms, that's totally okay. I was when I was in your shoes, but early action is essentially a non-binding agreement. You're simply getting a head start on the application process and you're going to hear back from us sooner. Jamie will get into when you will find out in just a minute. Early decision is a binding agreement. So it's a pretty big commitment for a student it essentially means if you're admitted, you're committed to Chapman and withdrawing from all of your other applications. So this is also a big financial commitment for a student because if you do indicate that early decision plan, you aren't going to be aware of any merit scholarship you will potentially receive, what your financial aid package will look like. So if that is a big uh, aspect for you in the college admission process, we typically recommend applying early action. Now. November 1st is also a priority deadline for quite a few programs. I might need to lean on Jamie I if say, I, this is a test. I do forget. <laughs> Film and television production is one of them. As far as the other programs, screen acting, theater performance, pre-pharmacy, writing for film and television, and I'm always miss dance. dance. Always missing one. Thanks, Jamie. Of course. High five work. again. <laughs> so if you're applying to any of those programs, please make sure that you are aware of that priority deadline of November 1st. Now, we do have another deadline. It's January 15th. It's similar to early action. It's non-binding. So I'll pass it back off to Jamie on when you'll find out. Yeah. So for those students that choose to apply November 1st or for those students that we ask to apply November 1st, um, you will hear back for most programs in mid-December of your decision. For those that apply um, January 15th, our regular decision deadline, those students will hear back in mid-March of their decision. It is important to note that there are a few programs that that decision day can differ based on a variety of different factors. So for some of our talent-based programs, um, if there's an audition that goes along with that program, your audition date might be in January. So you might not hear until after January uh, because we wanna see you in person and live and dancing or acting or whatever it might be. So that can change your decision deadline. And then for our film and television production students, those that apply EA, those students will hear in late January to mid February of their decision. So that's just something to be aware of if you haven't received your decision by um, mid-December, that's okay. I promise we did not forget about your application. We're working hard on reviewing them and we're giving them the best review that we can to get you those decisions just a little bit later on. So that's something to keep in mind. Another important, important deadline or multiple deadlines um, are our transfer deadlines. So there are two transfer deadlines. The first deadline is October 15th. So that is coming up real fast. And students that apply October 15th those students are interested in attending for the spring of 2023. So if you wanna come in this spring, October 15th is your deadline. If you're interested in transferring for the fall of 2023, your deadline will be February 15th. So keep those dates in mind, figure out kind of when you're interested in starting um, and mark those deadlines down on your calendars. For students that apply through, or for transfers that are applying, our decisions are released on a rolling basis, so it can take anywhere from like three to six weeks to receive your decision. 
Um, so stay patient with our transfer team. Like I said, they're amazing. They're working really hard. So um, yeah, just keep an eye out for those decisions because they will be coming your way. Um, did I cover all those things? I think we did. Yeah. You so got it, girl. We're, I like we're, this. We're doing I high like fives. This. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about when you will be receiving your decisions. Now, I talked about spring. Both transfers and first years have the ability to start in spring. Maybe a first year student took a little gap semester or graduated a semester early. Um, but there are a few programs that we want to talk about that you're not able to apply for spring. Um, for a variety of different reasons, those programs only start in the fall term. So what are those programs? So this is another test. <laughs> another test. We're getting tested today. So like Jamie mentioned, you'll just want to wait until the fall. You cannot mm -hmm. apply for the spring. So film and television production, screen acting, theater performance, along with pre-pharmacy. So just a friendly reminder, let's wait until the fall admission cycle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, this is going to be just a fun, like more, a little bit more personal into okay. what we look, look at in the application process. But pieces of advice. Yeah. Students are always asking, how do I make my application stand out? What should I do to like make my application better? Um, so we're going to tell you kind of what we think yeah. about that. So do you want to tell yeah. them a little bit about your advice? I'll get started. I think in this process, a little bit of homework goes a long way. And you can differentiate yourself in certain pieces of the application by just doing a little bit of research on our website. Mm. As far as the application goes and giving you some tips on that, I will say, and I think Jamie would definitely agree with this too, is it's essentially a puzzle piece. And what we want to know is different parts of you in each piece of the application. So I'll give you an example. If you're applying to a film program and you talk about film in your personal statement, and then you talk about film in your Y Chapman, and then the Y major, and then you have the creative supplement, and then maybe you talk about film again in your extracurriculars, it's starting to become a little bit repetitive, correct? Mm -hmm. Our campus has so much to offer outside of that primary academic major, from research to clubs and orgs to athletics. So there's so much out here. Just do a little bit of homework. It can help create that puzzle for us to learn more about you because we want you to explore here at Chapman. We don't want you to just get involved in one thing on our campus. So I would say that's my biggest piece of advice. What's yours? I definitely agree with that. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is really show all the wonderful traits and qualities that you have. We know that you are all incredible people, incredible students. Um, and yes, obviously your academics are so important to us as we're an academic institution. Um, but we do care about so much more than that. We have a holistic review process at Chapman. Um, but there are a few traits and qualities that our team of admission counselors have kind of brought together as the traits and qualities of some of our most successful students on campus. These are students that are thriving, enjoying their time, they're involved, they're leaders on campus. Um, and so we've kind of put together those traits to use through our review process to kind of help us identify students that are really going to be successful on our campus. And some of those traits are we're looking for students that are advocating for themselves. They're self-advocates. They're authentic throughout their application. We want to see who you are, not who you think we want you to be. Be who you are. Um, we're looking for students that are going to persevere and really push through the challenges in their life. Students that have a lot of potential as well as empathy for others. Um, and we know that this can be a little bit tricky while talking about it because it's subjective. They're not objective things. But if you are able to show that through all those incredible supplemental questions that we have or through your personal statement, um, we really take notice of that and we take notice of those qualities. So definitely think about that as you're writing those supplements and as you're working on your application because we're going to be looking for those. Mm. Yeah, that's my piece of advice. Yeah, Jamie yeah. was just in Texas. Yes. For NACAC. Mm -hmm. And our supervisor, Casey Decker Labar, shout out if she is shout out Casey. here listening to this, but she presented on this idea to a bunch of counselors and um, high school counselors from all across the country. So, how was Texas? Texas was awesome. Yeehaw. It was great. No, really, I had such a blast. I love visiting my students in Texas and I love meeting with high school counselors and just engaging with the people there. So it was a great trip. 
Well, we're mm -hmm. happy to have her back. Yes, I'm happy to be back. She's yeah, I definitely missed home. So it's nice to be back. Um, so, okay, you've received your admission decision. Congratulations, you are admitted. Yay, oh my gosh. Um, now, financial aid. Mm -hmm. That's a huge part about afford. college. We gotta be able to afford it. And so, what are some ways that we can help our students and what are some ways that our students can receive help in paying for Chapman? So the first is going to be merit scholarships. Merit scholarships are um, based off of your GPA as well as the rigor of your curriculum. These scholarships range from fourteen dollars to $36,000 a year, um, and they're awarded at the time of admission. So when you receive your acceptance letter in the mail, as in your email, you will um, get information on your merit scholarship if you were awarded one. So it's really nice to kind of have an initial idea of what might be to come and just have that right off the bat. Um, but what is another form of scholarship financial aid that our students can receive? Great question. And I will say the different opportunities and resources that we're talking about are stackable. So if a student really does point. receive merit-based scholarship, they can also receive financial aid. So what is financial aid? It's need-based aid through submitting a FAFSA application. So FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And I can't believe it's almost already October, <laughs> but the application for the FAFSA actually opens October 1st. So in a few days, you can get started on that FAFSA application and send that to the universities that you are applying for. So through the FAFSA, you can receive grants and loan opportunities. So grants are good. Grants, good. I always use that yeah. for people to understand it a little bit more because it's free money that you're not gonna have to pay back after graduating. Loans, those are a different story. You will have to pay that back, but you can receive federal and state aid through applying for the FAFSA. Since we're a private institution, we also have private grant opportunities. So please fill out that FAFSA. We highly recommend it. Fill it out. <laughs> and please check out your high school's websites as well. They're typically um, hosting some kind of workshops on how to fill those out because for a lot of you, it's sometimes the first time that you're even being exposed to this aspect. So please fill out the FAFSA, check out that website, and get that started on that October 1st. Yeah. It can be like family time. Yeah. Fill it out with your families. It's oh, yeah. nice. Bonding, right? <laughs> it's great. Um, but definitely fill out the FAFSA. Um, another scholarship that you can receive is we do have departmental scholarships. And these scholarships have a bit of a range in terms of the amount, just depending on the department and what they, what they have available. These scholarships, for most of them, you do not need to apply. Your students will automatically be considered for them. Um, there are a few that have applications, um, so you'll get emails about those if you kind of fall under the umbrella of those departments to, so that you're able to apply for them. Um, but these are typically awarded in like March, April, so they come a little bit later on um, in your decision process, but just hang on, they're coming. Um, but that's another kind of great way. And then I know you've got yeah. one or two more. I got one more. Yeah. And again, remember, <laughs> these opportunities are stackable. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're able to make Chapman a more feasible option. And over 85% of our students benefit, benefit from financial aid on our campus. Yeah. So as far as my tip for you all is it's a good time in this process to hear about those outside scholarships. So you might have heard about them already, but I hope to give you a little bit more insight on what an outside scholarship is. So I always give my brother as an example because he attended the University of Southern California, and the only reason he was able to attend was an outside scholarship he got for being a first-generation Iranian student. And it was $10,000 a year, and that's what made his time possible there. The way we found out about it was actually funny. My uncle was listening to a Persian radio station and heard about an advertisement about this scholarship. Oh, that's awesome. Did some research on it, sent it to my brother, and he applied for it and ended up being awarded. So there's a lot of companies, people out there, thousands and thousands that want to help you all, but it's up to you to be proactive and start the search for them. To give you another idea, if you're interested in screen acting, the Screen Acting Guild, so if you've heard of the SAG Awards, they offer a scholarship for students. Ooh. Taco Bell, who's actually <laughs> headquartered here in Irvine, where we have a good amount of alumni at, offers an outside scholarship. I think it's on the more competitive side, 
but I'm trying to give you an idea of how many people out there want to help you because that is what made a difference for someone like my brother. Yeah. So, and it can really helps. make all the difference for students. True. And when it comes to when you receive your financial aid package, um, students can expect to receive their financial aid package in like within like two to three weeks mm -hmm. of receiving their decision. So once we make the decision and send that to you all, we'll kind of put your package together and send it your way. So just keep an eye out for that. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you're probably thinking, this all sounds so incredible. How can I learn more? And that is a really, really good question. Um, there are so many great ways to connect with us, um, and both virtually and in person. So if you're not able to make it to campus, that's totally fine. There are some great opportunities. So we have Discover Chapman events. That is coming up November 2nd through the 16th, I believe. And we will be having virtual information sessions with a lot of our different departments on campus, student life, different majors. So it's a great way to just learn more about the different opportunities on campus, what your curriculum might look like in your major. And it's a really um, great way just to engage with Chapman a bit more. And you can do that from all over the world. So that's a great opportunity. We also offer both virtual and in-person tours. Our tour guides are incredible. Tanaz actually helps manage our tour guides and she yeah, has done an incredible job helping them just I mean, they're already just <laughs> awesome, but Tanaz has done really great work with them. So come to a tour virtually or in person. Both are great. Um, we also offer virtual information sessions that are held with an admission counselor, um, and that's a great way just to get a little bit more info about our different offerings, student life, all that good stuff. Um, and then we do offer departmental tours. So we offer tours of the Conservatory of Music, of Keck, our science building, as well as our Dodge College. Um, this space here kind of is dodgy, um, which is pretty awesome. And so you get to see some really cool spaces on that tour as well. So definitely recommend looking into those. Um, but what about connecting with us? What does that look like? I do have to say, we are on a film set. I know. And there is water in here. <laughs> I watch Tom talk Burns. shows and I always, I'm skeptical, there's no water in the cups, there's, there's no water. water. So rest assured, there is water, people, okay? True. We, everyone here has an admission counselor. So just so you know, you can contact your admission counselor with pretty much any question that you have. We are really here to help and guide you through the process. So if you just go to chapman.edu, search meet your counselor, that page will come up and you can actually search who your counselor is by high school because there are some areas in the country where we're split up pretty funky. One of them being Orange County, the yeah. other the Bay Area. Yeah, there's so a lot of us up there. <laughs> we're, we're split. So go ahead, type in your high school and you'll find your admission counselor. I hope we're not that scary. We're not, well, some, sometimes. I'm pretty terrifying. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. some days, <laughs> Mondays? Yeah. But Thursdays? We're good on Thursdays. We're good. <laughs> so please reach out to us. We are so happy to connect with you all. Also, we are traveling for the next month mm -hmm. or so, a little bit into November as well. So we are potentially visiting your high school, so you can meet us in person. I'll be visiting the San Fernando Valley in the mid-Atlantic in mid-October. When's your next trip? I leave Sunday. I'm heading to San Diego. So if you're in San Diego, keep an eye out. Hopefully I'm visiting a high school near you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're doing a lot of travel. We're meeting a lot of students, and it's been really exciting. Yeah, that's, a, that's about it, I think. I about think. all the connecting. I think that's all the connecting. Okay. That sounds about right. Cool. Um, but yeah, really do feel free to reach out to us. Our jobs as admission counselors are to be a resource to you. So let us be a resource to you and ask <laughs> us those questions. That's what we're here to do and we love doing that. Um, but we're going to get into some nice Q&A. I see that Steele has put in a whole lot of <laughs> questions. And so I really appreciate you all asking your questions. I hope we're able to get through them all. If we aren't able to get through them all, please reach out to your admission counselor and ask these questions. We're happy, like I said, to answer them all and we want to make sure we get to them. So we're gonna, we're gonna get started. Ooh. So the first question that I'm gonna ask is tips for the Y Chapman. Mm. So this question asks, there are X amount of universities in the entire country and in the world. Why are you applying to Chapman? Mm -hmm. um, I think my biggest tip for this is to be specific. We receive um, some responses saying, oh, 
I just love Disneyland and I want to be really close to Disneyland and that's great and we are close to Disneyland which is pretty fun but what is it about Chapman University and what we offer that draws you in not the surrounding area but our campus and our departments our academics our research whatever it might be and show us that and that's where that research piece comes in that Tanaz was talking about earlier um, have you done a little research it can be something you are getting from us today hopefully you are learning something today um, it can be from a tour you went on it can be from just researching the website um, but just really pulling in those specifics mm -hmm. anything to add I agree I definitely agree with that like I said a little homework goes a long way. Jamie actually used to study on Disney's campus. I did. Didn't you do that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would go sometimes and just take a seat and do some studying, do some people watching, maybe a little more people watching than studying, but mm -hmm. I brought my homework, so that's what really matters. But yeah, I did do that. Um, so the next question is, ooh, this is a really great one. Um, how easy is it to switch majors once you're at Chapman? What does Good that look like? Question. So for any, let's say, uh, let's give a scenario first. Mm -hmm. If you're applying undecided, for example, with the intention of switching into a program that's talent related, so sure. something within Dodge College of Film, mm -hmm. something within the College of Performing Arts, it is very difficult and sometimes not possible to switch into those programs. There is a very competitive application process for our current students. So if you're thinking about that route, please apply directly to the major. I think yeah. that's the best tip for you all. As far as switching majors outside of something talent related, so if you're looking to go into psychology, the School of Communication, Arjo School of Business, fairly simple to switch into. Yeah. yeah, I would say it's pretty seamless. Yeah, there are a few programs that will have some prerequisite courses that you need to complete before transferring in or switching in, um, but for the most part, it's you get a little signature and you can make that switch. Um, and we don't say that about the talent majors to scare you at all, exactly. obviously. We just want to be really transparent because we want you all to have all the information that you can moving forward. So, great work. Um, okay, ooh, a test optional question. Ooh, I knew that was coming. Yep, will it hurt my chances if I don't submit my test scores? No, I promise you, when I say <laughs> optional, <laughs> we mean, we really do mean optional. Um, if you do not te submit test scores, it will not put you at a disadvantage for admission. It will not put you at a disadvantage for scholarships, anything like that. I promise it is truly, mm -hmm. truly optional. I mean, believe me. 72% <laughs> of yeah. our applicant pool, like I said, applied test optional. That means they didn't submit, submit their test score. The year before was 74%. Yeah. So students are leaning towards this test optional policy. Which we're excited more. about. Yeah, we love and it. And our admitted class is on par with those numbers as well, I believe. So it's, it works, I swear. Mm -hmm. Don't be stressed out about it. <laughs> Remember, everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, just take a breath. <laughs> take a deep breath. Um, okay, interviews. Mm -hmm. Required? Optional. We do offer fellows interviews. So mm -hmm. you can check out our website, I am a big fan of the website. I think it's awesome. Brendan Babish, big contributor to our website. He's awesome, so if he's watching this, we you go, a lot Brendan. Of shout outs. Yeah, <laughs> shout outs today. That's that's the theme of today, along with relaxing and everything's gonna be okay. Okay, back, back to the programming. So chapman.edu, type in fellows interviews, and you can sign up for one. So fellows interviews are actually with our current students. So one-on-ones with them, they'll learn more about you, You'll learn more about them. You can ask questions about Chapman. So it is pretty easy to sign up for one of those. Were you an interviewer when you were a student? I was. Oh, shit. Yes, I was a fellow interview. So you interviewer. interviewed applicants. Yes, I interviewed applicants. Awesome. It's, I mean, I think it's a really great opportunity for both our students as like a professional opportunity for them, but also for our prospective students to just learn more, ask questions, get to share more about who they are. Um, so. Our students really like it. So yeah. if you're interested, you can check it out on the website and sign up for one. Totally optional. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like I need to sing or 
stand yeah. trying to search for these questions. Um, so I see something? fabulous we are. Yeah. I'm seeing, are these questions valid for master's students as well? And so I just want to cover that. This is primarily for undergraduate students. Um, we do have an incredible grad program or grad department on campus. So um, if you have specific questions about master's programs, definitely reach out to them because this is definitely a more undergrad focus. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually getting my master's oh, at yeah. Chapman. So they are awesome, our grad team. Reach out to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can we get a copy of this live chat? I lost connectivity. Oh, oh no. no. But yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. <laughs> it will be posted after the event. So keep an eye out, and hopefully you'll be able to get all the information from there. That's a great question. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, OK. So what is the difference between the school report on the Common App and the counselor letter of recommendation? Can you talk a little bit about those sure. two things? That'd so be the great. school report form, along with the counselor recommendation, those come directly from your either counselor or institution. So your school report form essentially is a write-up of what your high school is like. How big is it? What classes do you offer? APs, IBs, maybe none, maybe only honors. So this is how we're able to really take a deep dive into your transcript and understand what your curriculum is, where you're coming from, because it could be down the street from us, it could be across the country from us, every high school operates a little bit differently. So that is essentially what your school report form is. The counselor recommendation is what it sounds. It's a recommendation from your counselor. So if you're wondering a little bit about how to request those or who to go to, please go to your high school um, and talk to somebody, maybe an administration, a high school counselor. They are gonna be very familiar with what that is. Yeah, absolutely. And just letters of recommendation in general, I think it's good to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, we do require at least one letter of recommendation from an academic source, so either a counselor or a teacher, um, but we'll read up to three letters of recommendation. So if you have additional teachers or a coach or a boss or a mentor or whatever it might be and you'd like to have them send us a letter of recommendation, feel free to do so. Um, it's a great way for us to get a little bit more insight into who you are. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice for us to see. Quality over quantity on those letters. Yes, I will absolutely. add, you don't need to submit 72. Mm -mm. Sometimes many of them will get slipped in there, but they start to sound repetitive. We yeah. really only require one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a really great question about um, if you apply early decision, mm. but don't get into your first choice major, um, is it still binding? And so this is a great opportunity to talk about first choice majors and second choice majors. So when you're applying on the common application, you'll see a first choice and a second choice major. Um, and if you are not admitted into your first choice major for whatever reason, we will consider you for your second choice major. We'll take a look, see if we think that's a good fit for you. Um, and if you did apply early decision, we will reach out to you and say, do you still want to, want to be early decision with this second choice? Yes or no? And so you can tell us, yes, I'm still all in, or no, I'm excited to move forward with this, but I want to still have options at that point. And um, that's always a great way to do it. So we're, we'll be very communicative with you um, throughout that process if we do can decide to move forward with your second choice major. Um, but that was a really great question. Um, ooh, okay, can you take classes outside your major? Mm, yes, Great. yes you can. Mm -hmm. That's just a simple answer. I will say for some, for some classes, they are only open to students within that program, especially once you get to those upper division requirements and there's prerequisites. A really great resource is actually our course catalog. So I'm sorry, I just keep shouting out our website, but if you go to <laughs> Chapman or just quick Google search, Chapman course catalog, you can see every single course that is required for the program that you are in. So if you are looking at, let's say, AVE, Animation Visual Effects 424, you'll see that there's probably a prerequisite for the class and it yeah. might only be open to students within that major. However, there's other courses that are intro level, introduction, introduction to screen acting. I remember when I was a student, I took a few business classes because I was interested in marketing. 
You're also required to minor on our campus. So there's a lot of ways to dip and dive outside of your major. Yeah, it's definitely very much encouraged, if not required, mm -hmm. honestly. Exactly. Um, yeah, definitely. So, um, okay, great question about the creative supplement. Um, and the question is, do I need to submit my application early if I'm submitting a creative supplement? And that is a great question because yes. kind of. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that are applying to talent-based programs, the creative supplement, you will gain access to the creative supplement around 24 to 48 hours after submitting your common application. So because of that, we do ask that you submit your common app a few days early to give yourself time to gain access to your creative supplement upload all the, those materials by the deadline of either November 1st or January 15th. So because of that, yeah, we mm -hmm. do kind of ask that you submit your common application a few days early, a little bit early. Um, so yes. It does yeah. get a little crazy around the deadlines mm -hmm. too. So as we near November 1st and as we near January 15th, you just wanna make sure that you have everything in so that you're not scrambling by November 1st or January 15th to get all those final materials in. Yeah. So we do it and tell you to do it in your best interest. Yeah, we're very communicative with you throughout the process. Right. Expect a lot of emails. That's a piece of advice. Mm -hmm. Check your email. Mm -hmm. Check your email a lot. Um, we will be sending lots of reminders and lots of information to those emails, so you wanna make sure that you're keeping up to date with all that. Um, and then if you have any trouble, again, reach out to us yeah. so we can get it figured out. Not to go on a tangent though, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna go but on I'm a tangent. But I'm gonna go on a tangent, because I think it'll help you all. You don't just have to remember every single thing at times. Yeah. You'll have a beautiful, beautiful applicant status portal once you submit that common application. So that applicant status portal will populate and say, oh, you've submitted your common app. You'll have a beautiful little green check mark mm -hmm. there. And then it might say, you're missing your letter of recommendation or you're missing your transcripts. And so you will receive emails from us if you are missing things in the applicant status portal that you have access to. So please make sure to compartmentalize all your login informations because you're gonna have a lot. Yeah. So check that email. Jamie is very correct there. Absolutely. Um, Ooh, a little research question. Ooh. How easy is it to be able to get a research-related internship or opportunity? Mm -hmm. um, and would there be a good place to mention something similar to that interest during the application process? Oh, yeah. That's a great question. 100%. So something I love about Chapman is day one, first semester, you're going to get started. Mm -hmm. Whether that's research, whether that's classes within your program, it's very hands-on. And most of the classes aren't just lecture style, you'll actually be doing things. So if you're in a STEM related field, you'll be in labs, you'll be able to conduct research. So as far as those opportunities go, definitely include that in the application process. We love to see that you are ready to hit the ground running and take on those internship opportunities. Another thing I love is you can conduct in research in different programs. It doesn't just have to be STEM related to do research and actually, Research is sometimes a requirement for some programs. So when I was a student, I was in the School of Communication. I worked with a professor on Adderall usage amongst college students. There's another tour guide in our office. She's an economics major. She has been conducting research since her first semester as a first year student with a faculty member and is still working with him on that. So I think that's a little bit of insight. There's so much more that the campus has to offer but do you have any other things you want to add on? Well, just to kind of the second part of that question in terms of noting it on your application, mm -hmm. we l would love for you to note it on your application. And there's a few different ways you can do it. You can, when you're talking about your major, if you want to talk about it there, if it's major related, or if you're talking about just Chapman and you know of a really cool research opportunity taking place, put it there. Um, and I believe in your activities, you can also note it as something you might be interested oh, yeah. in. So, Definitely noted on your application. We love to see that. Research is really important on our campus. Mm -hmm. So, Professor Doug Fudge is doing oh. research right now on hagfish. It's so slimy. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have hagfish on our campus. I didn't know that. Yeah. If you go through the Keck Center of Science and Engineering, which I walk a lot on campus. Every I, day at yeah. lunch. Yeah. They tomorrow. don't ask me to go to lunch because they know I'm walking. Yeah. But I'll walk through the Keck Center if it's raining or if it's really hot, like a day like today. And there's animal tanks in there. And How have I never fish. realized that? Yeah, 
See, come with me on my walk. Oh my gosh. Wow, hagfish. That's crazy. I'm just going to bring your running shoes. Yeah, I'm going to have to go next time. That sounds fun. Um, so that was a really great question. Okay, this is a good question too. Um, these are all good questions. I keep saying that. I'm just, I, I promise they're all good. If I don't say that, it's still a good question, I swear. Um, if you are not accepted to Dodge, can you still be admitted into Chapman? Okay, that's a great and that, question. Yeah, that's definitely important. And um, if you are applying to only Dodge majors and you are not accepted into those programs, no. We are not going to admit you to Chapman for a program that you didn't apply into or that you're not interested in. So um, if you aren't admitted into your Dodge programs, we're not going to just accept you undecided or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are very, very interested in also majoring in psychology and oh my gosh, I just love psychology. I was a psych major, so I get it. Um, it's a great program. Um, and we decide that we would like to move forward considering you for that psychology major, then we still can. But typically, you are admitted into your, only the majors that you applied into. Mm -hmm. right? It's one admission decision. Yes. So I think that's a large misconception, even when we're on the road. Definitely. We get asked this all the time. Can I get into Dodge and not into Chapman or vice versa? It's just one admission decision. I hope that simplifies things for everybody. Yeah. So yeah. you're either admitted, denied, for your first choice major at Chapman University. Just one. That's a great way to put it, and a much easier no, way to put you're it. Great. You're doing great. <laughs> um, so there's a question about um, applying to the honors program. Ooh, Ooh. actually, we, I think we should talk a little bit more about the second choice major. Oh, yeah. Just because I think it can be a little confusing, and mm -hmm. I just think that might be good. So for the second choice major, my biggest piece of advice when it comes to the second choice major is if it is something that you are actually very interested in majoring in, tell us how interested you are in that program. Um, some students will say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this first choice major, I love it, these are all the reasons why I love it, and then they'll leave the second one blank. Mm -hmm. And that, unfortunately, at that point, you're not showing us that you really wanna be in that program, so it's hard for us to consider your second choice major for that. Um, so I just want to kind of throw that in there. Right. But there is the option in there to put a second choice. But you don't have to. If you're like, I'm gung-ho for this one, awesome. Do that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just wanted to make sure that that was super clear. Um, so at Chapman, we have an incredible honors program. It's really cool. Um, it's very interdisciplinary with small class sizes. I think they're capped at like 15 students per class. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got a question about applying into the honors program and what that looks like. Um, after you're admitted into Chapman, you can be invited to apply into the honors program. Um, anyone can apply into the honors program. And I believe it's probably some additional supplemental questions. There might be a GPA requirement as well. Um, and you have until your, the end of your sophomore year to apply into, this, into the honors program. Um, because we wanna make sure that you are able to complete all the required classes prior to graduating. Um, so if you're interested, would highly recommend looking into it. Um, I'm also going to plug right now Unibuddy because we have a great, great program on our website, which Tanaz loves, of course, called Unibuddy. And through Unibuddy, you can connect with some of our current students. So you can search by major, you can search by activity, whatever it might be, and you can chat with them and ask them questions. They'll respond typically within the day. They mm -hmm. try, no promises, they're busy. They have other things, um, but the, it's a great way to get information on programs, kind of the inside scoop of campus. So mm -hmm. for the honors program, I would highly recommend reaching out to some of our students that are involved in the honors program as a way to learn more about some of those classes. I know there are some, like a religions in Harry Potter course yeah. maybe. Um, there are some really awesome classes within them. So mm -hmm. you can find the application on the website after you are admitted to Chapman. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a student to reach out to on Unibuddy. Her name is Lauren. Let's do some digging there. She's in the honors program. She actually works for the honors college as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're curious, reach out to Lauren on Unibuddy. Absolutely. I mean, reach out to any of them. They're really True. great. True. Um, this is a interesting. So for early decision, I know we're kind of going back and forth. I'm jumping back and forth. Um, there's a question about 
early decision, like if you're not admitted, mm -hmm. does it roll over to regular decision? And that's a valid question. Unfortunately, no, it does not. Um, if you are denied from early decision, unfortunately, we can only accept one application within a cal calendar year or one yeah. school year um, for a student. So if you're interested in reapplying at a later date, you'll have to wait until the next admission cycle to reapply. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Is it possible to double major if you are a talent major? And should you share that in the application? But also just double majoring in general. Yeah. What I will say with double majoring is it really depends on that primary major, especially if it's talent based, if it's a fine arts, so a BFA, the credit counts can be heavy on that primary major. So just to give you an idea, let's say for example, screen acting is 76 units. So 76 units is needed for that program. Three units equates to one course at Chapman. You need 120 units to graduate. Yeah. So that primary major is gonna take up 76 units, that's a lot, and then you'll take your general education requirements, your minor, so you're close to that 120. So if you're gonna take on another major, it needs to be very strategic and it needs to be with a credit count that isn't as big as 76, I would yeah. say. So if that is of interest to you, take a look at our minors, but always check out that course catalog because we do have that, those credits on there. Yeah. 120 units takes about four years to do, mm -hmm. but also depends, it's very case by case. Some students are bringing in a lot of credits, some students are you know, bringing in APs and IBs. So just know that double majoring is possible on our campus, but I'm just giving you a scenario of one that could be a little bit difficult yeah. to double major with. And it's definitely difficult, and for students that are super, super set on that, um, we definitely re just recommend working with an advisor, a program advisor, exactly. an academic advisor, create a four-year plan to really kind of plan out what classes you're taking when and how you can fit all of those in. One of our one of our former tour guides, he was a double major with two BFA programs mm -hmm. and he was a tour guide and I don't know how he did it. So it's possible, but you're gonna be busy and you're gonna have to really be yeah strategic about mm -hmm. making that plan. Um, but double majoring is definitely super common on campus. I was a double major when I was a student, and so if it's something you're really interested in, definitely recommend looking into it. You just wanna be careful about planning it out because you also want to enjoy your time and get involved with things. So um, if you feel that it's going to be too much, maybe a minor's a great option, yeah. but it's common on campus. We've got a lot of students yeah, double majoring. It is common. And you can double my minor. Totally. I've heard students triple minor Yeah. sometimes. I know of a student that triple majored. Oh, it, mm. and that's that, a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, kudos to them. What were your double majors again? I was psychology and integrated educational studies. Okay, that's a great duo. Yeah, that's they a great duo. work really well together. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, both about 46 units each, yeah. I would say. So that's very doable. Totally. Because we also have inner term. Mm -hmm. So. Oh yeah, want to talk yeah, about Yeah, I'll bring up inner term. So we're on a 414 system here at Chapman. So that's four months in the fall, one month in January, known as inner term, and then four months in the spring. We're on a semester system. So inner term is optional. It's incorporated into your fall semester tuition, but you can take a class. So I took economics when I was a student at Chapman just to get a head start on, you know, my program requirements. I cried almost every day. I'm just kidding. I didn't <laughs> I like, cry oh, at no. all. I actually did well and I'm not I'm not that great at econ, but um, definitely recommend inner term. It's a great time to take one class. So you can also take travel courses during inner term as well. So there's a religion and gender and Harry Potter course that goes to London. There's a Game of Thrones course that goes to Ireland. Yeah. Um, and then we have both domestic and international travel courses. So inner term's a great time to, you know, take some courses and it gives you, so if you take four inner terms, you know, that's almost one semester essentially. So inner term's a great time. Yeah, absolutely. I always recommend. But if you want to stay home and have a six week long winter break, that sounds pretty nice too. Yeah, don't mind that. Um, yeah, don't mind that. Um, do letters of recommendation need to be submitted by November 1st for early action and early decision or can they trickle in? Mm -hmm. um, and 
we would love for them to be in by November 1st, but we do understand that sometimes those letters of recommendation are outside of your control. You're really waiting on that counselor, that teacher to write the letters, and they're probably writing more than one. Um, so if they trickle in, that's totally fine. We're really understanding of that. Um, so don't be stressed if they aren't in exactly by November 1. But once it hits November 1, maybe just like give them a little nudge. Ask how they're doing. Check in on them. Yeah. Hey. And make this sure to safe. thank your letter of recommendation writers yes. after they write. They're doing a lot of work writing all these letters. So I think it goes a long way just to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank your teachers, thank your counselors. Give them a hug, high five. Yeah. Just saying, they do a lot. Yes, they do. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's see. I'm so sorry. I'm no, trying to find it. You just have great nails. Oh. Always. Thank you so much. Just green nails. Really, they look really good right now. Um, okay, I'm trying to find just like one or two more questions. Ugh. You guys are asking great questions. Yeah, these I will really say. are. Um, okay, EA versus ED. Mm. What is the difference? I mean, I know we talked about the difference in like logistics, but is ED going to like basically guarantee admission over EA, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, and realistically, it's not. They have really similar acceptance rates. Um, it truly is just a preference on, do I feel ready to 100% commit to Chapman? And we don't expect that from students. Um, we know that you've got a lot going on, there's a lot of factors that you need to consider. So don't feel like you have to apply ED, that is not the case. Um, but it is a great way for our students to show kind of their commitment and interest in Chapman and in us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything to add to that? Yeah, I'll say I get asked this question also all, all the time on the road or in information sessions. And as Jamie mentioned, it's, you know, not going to be a huge differentiator, EA and ED. And some universities so this is going to look different at every school but some universities build their classes with early decision so we have early decision to be in line with other institutions but i always will give this scenario to a student who's teetering tottering between ea and ed on which one should i do well one really think about that financial aid uh, compartment of things like i said you're not going to know what your merit or financial aid is going to look like just yet but also think about the fact that if you are admitted early decision to Chapman, you will have to withdraw from your other applications. So if you haven't heard from, let's say, LMU or USD, but you've heard back from Chapman, you'll have to withdraw from those applications. So that's, that's just something to think about. But for some students, it's the perfect fit. And for some, it's something they need to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's definitely going to just be up to the student and your preference. Yeah. Um, ooh. Are there a lot in there? There are a lot. Oh, wow. I'm seeing a lot about second choice, which okay. I know we talked about a lot. So if you have additional questions, reach out to your admission counselor about right. that. Um, I know it can be a kind of a confusing process. So I understand having all these questions about it. Um, uh, okay, last question pros and cons of applying early versus applying regular. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, one huge difference between the two is if you apply regular, we'll be able to see, which is January 15th, we'll be able to see your first semester grades from your senior year. Mm -hmm. um, so if those grades are really, really important to you um, and you feel like are going to really make an impact on your application, then regular decision could be a great idea. Um, so that's a pro for RD. A pro for EA is when applying EA, we have three decision options that we can give you. Um, in RD, there's, I mean, there's also three, but it's different. Um, so when you apply RD, you can be admitted, you can be denied, or you can be put on the wait list. For our early action students, you can be admitted, you can be denied, or you can be rolled to regular decision. And what that means is that means we're hoping to get some additional information from you, whether that is um, maybe one of those letters of rec mm -hmm. didn't make it in yet, and so we wanna make sure we see that. Um, maybe you are taking on 
five APs for the first time. You've never taken an AP class before, and we just want to see, okay, like how, how's that going to go? And we want to see your first semester grades. We might roll you to our regular decision pool and then reevaluate that application once we receive that additional information. So you have that additional option when you apply early and you wouldn't have that in regular. So that can be a pro for EA. Mm -hmm. I'll also say if you are admitted in early and our applicant pool in early action, early decisions, slightly smaller from mm -hmm. regular decision, but you have a lot of time between EA totally. indeed decision release to May 1st. So for early decision, if you are admitted, you have to deposit by January 15th, but for early action, you have until May 1st. So that gives you time in this college application process to visit schools, do that research, because it is a big commitment for a student. While in regular, I, would, I guess this would be the con if you find out mid-March, you only have a few months to figure out some pretty big details such as funding, such as visiting campuses and all that fun stuff and waiting for other colleges. So I would say that's a con, although either application plan is gonna be okay and like I said, everybody will be fine. Yeah, everyone will be fine. Um, but that was gonna be, our, that's our last question. Oh. So before we plug some cool events and some cool things we do, just want to say thank you yeah, so thank much you. for being here with us today and for asking such thoughtful questions. It's really nice to see so much interest and so much curiosity around this process. Um, I'm going to say it for probably like mm, the 40th time this yeah. live. Email us. Let us know if you have additional questions. We want to answer them, so let us know. I know we weren't able to get to all of our questions today, um, so we're happy to do so via email. Um, but Good luck Good through luck, the application yeah. process. It's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be great. Um, and we're so excited to review your applications. Yeah. So just to kind of plug some events coming up. So I mentioned early, early on, Discover Chapman events. Um, that's November 2nd through November 16th. Check those out. A lot of virtual off offerings to learn more about our institution. Um, see if Chapman's visiting your school. We'd love to connect in person. And then follow us on social media. Um, so first, we do have a TikTok. You should follow it. It's super fun. There's some good ones on there, some very funny ones. Um, so definitely check that out. Also, our Instagram is a great place to follow us. Um, we will post updates, a lot of information. We do a lot of student takeovers as well, so you can get some insider scoop from our students. And then, not to plug myself, but I'm starting, I've done one episode so far, a new kind of series called Jammin' with Jamie, where we're gonna just talk about Chapman and answer some questions and you can learn more about different areas of campus from student life to applying to um, Greek life to just all the things. And so come join me. Our next one's going to be the 20th of September. October, it, it, that has already passed, October 20th. Um, and so I'd love for you to come hang out. We're gonna be talking about student life and activities on campus. Um, but I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much you for missed. being here today. Thanks, and thank everyone. you, Tanaz. No, you were thank awesome. You. This is great. And pause up, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. Bye. working on it technology we're trying our best yeah i think i'm just like <laughs> staring into their souls yeah. right now if they're still on i would love to do some kind of dance or I something i know i wish i was doing? like a like a stand up comic that would be so you are funny so are, so something about Tanaz while we're waiting for this <laughs> is she will literally just cry laughing over i will stuff. so tell her a joke when you meet her yeah oh no, do not. <laughs> I will cry. I'll fall to the ground sometimes. It's true. It's, it's you know. dangerous. It's not productive. <laughs> no, it's not productive. It's not productive at You're all. You're absolutely right. Um, some fun facts about me is my favorite color is maroon. Um, I really love dogs. Like, I'm genuinely What's obsessed. your favorite dog? Golden Retriever. Mm. I just, I kind of feel like I'm a Golden Retriever. You do embody <laughs> Golden Retriever Thank vibes. You. I just wag my tail at anyone i don't know i just absolutely love a pup you do i'm the office dog sitter you need one like, i know i, I really just...